Hello, it is the 29th of September and I'm literally dying of excitement because I just got an email from Apple to say that my new podcast is now live on iTunes and I don't know why but of this year this is like the most exciting thing I feel like even including quitting my job have started a YouTube channel like I've done so many new things this year but I'm just so excited about having a podcast I think it's just because podcasts are what I consume a lot of I watch a ton of YouTube videos like a lot of YouTube videos but podcasts are where it all started for me and to have my own I just I feel like <laughs> I could never like I don't even know how to describe it, but when I first started listening, I was like, oh, imagine having your own podcast, and now I do, and I know anyone can start one, but it's still like I just never thought I actually would, so I'm very excited. If you want to listen to it, which I hope you will, that would be nice, um, you can search in iTunes for the Smart 20s podcast. You can probably even just type in my name, Sam Brown, and hopefully it'll come up. Or what else could you do? You could go, I'll put a link in the description box. You can find it through my blog. Um, so many things. So, so excited. <laughs> um, anyway, I'm not really sure what I'm going to talk about today, actually. This morning I was like, and this is what I was thinking before I got that email, I was like, ow. Um... I was thinking like why have I got this daily vlog where I need to talk about something every day because some days I just don't have, I don't know, I feel like I don't have anything to say but I guess I feel like I always do have something to say about personal development stuff and what I'm learning. I was listening to a podcast episode by Brooke Castillo yesterday, just for a change, you know, and um, she was just talking about mental health and that that like most people focus kind of think of mental health as a lack of oh shit my beauty blender um DIY wedding most people think of mental health as like a lack of mental illness rather than like actually managing your mind and it just really reminded me why I'm doing this because it's so, I just think it's so important to know how to manage your mind just because it's the one thing that will really have the biggest impact on your life because even if we achieve all our goals and, you know, everything that we want to happen, happen happens, we're still, like, if we don't know how to manage our mind and if we don't know how to appreciate what we have and we're not in an ab abundance mindset where we, oops, oh, oh, I'll have to get that off later, I just put foundation everywhere, um, if we're not in an abundant mindset where what we have is enough and we can get more, but like people with millions and millions and millions of dollars, some of them are just in such a scarcity mindset they don't believe that that's enough money they're scared of losing it um and all of that kind of thing so it's not like you know you'll just switch to being like having the right mindset when you get what you want because that doesn't happen for some people it might it depends on <laughs> your mindset but for a lot of people they end up very unhappy because they don't know how to manage their mind and we're not really even taught that you can manage your mind. Like in school and stuff, we're taught that, you know, you need to try to control your surroundings and control the people around you so you can feel a certain way. But actually, we can feel however we want to feel just by knowing how to manage our mind, which is why I'm doing Brooks course. It's why I'm doing these vlogs. It's why I spend time every single day trying to learn how to better manage my mind because I am not an expert at it at all and I don't know if anyone really is maybe a few people but it's 
one of those things like there's always something more to do I feel like it's so hot at the moment it's only the end of September but it's already feeling like full throttle summer weather here in Brisbane we have very hot summers it's very humid um, often like all of summer would be in the 30 degree Celsius range um, and I feel like when it's that weather I'm just constantly red and look flushed and I just feel like gross as well from being like I feel like you know when you're hot you like swell up I just feel like oh so yeah that's what I've been dealing with the last few days being like why do I feel like gross <laughs> see that's how I need that's how I need to manage my mind because I'm not gross <laughs> and if I tell myself I am then I'll believe it if I tell myself I'm not I'll believe it see what I mean Anyway, I was listening to that and that was just so good. I've been reading this book. Oh, it's right here. Shoe Dog by Phil Knight. He's the co-founder of Nike. So I thought he was a founder from what I've read so far, but then I just Googled him because I actually wanted to know what he looks like. Um, and or maybe there's a photo section. No. And it said he's a co-founder. So I haven't met in the book yet the co-founder, I don't think, or I don't know. But it's really, really good. I love the writing style, and I don't know if that's me being like, oh, nerd. <laughs> but when I'm reading the writing, I'm like, oh, that's like such a good way to say that. Um, and I also think his story is so interesting. I've only read the first little bit and he's it's cool too because he's like the same age as me in the bit I'm reading in real life he's in his 70s I'm pretty sure um and he's like just having the idea for Nike and just so many little things that I was thinking about when I was reading it like he went to Japan with this idea to import Japanese shoes and he went to a factory to have a meeting and they were like yeah we'll send you some shoes to the US obviously back in the day it takes a while to send things but also you don't have any like real quick form of communication um, but he kept traveling and then he went back home four months later and he's like are my shoes here which to me was even so funny because you just like text the person at home and be like you know text me that my shoes are here or whatever but he didn't even have a way to be contacted regularly because he was traveling just so interesting anyway um he had to wait a year it was a year after the meeting before the shoes arrived like just putting that into perspective of like how like in the book that's like you know two pages where it's like one year later the book arrived I mean the shoes <laughs> arrived but so like I think so many of us are so impatient and waiting a year just to receive the sample shoes like just that in itself I was like mm, it's so important when reading stories like that and looking at success stories to really pay attention to timelines because like it's really easy for them to fast forward and be like oh and next thing he knew he was the like a billionaire whatever I don't know I actually don't know that much about him I like Nike but I'm not a huge fan but I just always think those founder books are really interesting because they're on the emotional roller coaster of creating something new <laughs> and that's what fascinates me but um yeah, I just think it's really important if you have anyone that you really look up to and you're comparing yourself to them just to actually have a look at their timeline and how long they were working behind the scenes before they actually became successful. With a few exceptions, most of them will have worked at least a decade <laughs> um, before any kind of attention. And now in like the social media world, we all expect like attention and results so quickly and I don't think that's our fault we've just kind of grown up in this instant gratification era era 
era. <laughs> I don't know how to say it. Um, and yeah, so I think that's just really good to pay attention to. I also saw something on Netflix last night that I'm so excited to watch. So Steve and I are watching Shooter at the moment and <laughs> I like it. Um, there's a lot of a lot of gore in it, um, which I'm not really a fan of, but I really like thrillers and that kind of thing. Um, my eyebrows. So we're watching that. When I got into Netflix, it had recommended to me and probably many of other people many other people, the Lady Gaga documentary, and I immediately was like, oh my god, I need to watch that. Because I'm obsessed with all of those kinds of documentaries. I think I spoke about it maybe like a week or two ago in these videos that I love Beyonce's documentary, Life is Better Dream. I also loved Katy Perry's, like I'm a huge fan of Beyonce. I'm like a moderate fan of Katy Perry, like I don't mind her music, but I, yeah, I wouldn't call myself a big fan. But anyway, loved it because it's just the the um the amount of hard work and rejection and persistence that they have to go through is just insane, and I think we look at those people and it looks so easy like if you look at Beyonce you would think her success has been like a really easy journey just because the media always creates that impression of like the overnight success and all of that kind of thing and just people yeah just getting discovered out of nowhere and then suddenly like it the media really doesn't give a good or anything it's really easy to skip over all the time what I guess I'm trying to say is that I think it's so important to be patient be aware of how long things take and often oh, battery is low often we get disheartened without even needing to because we're not getting results quick enough even though all the people that we're trying to replicate or that we aspire to have a career like or whatever those people had to be had to wait the same amount of time too and I think patience isn't spoken about enough and that it's like just being patient like I knew when I started my blog that persistence like it didn't even matter if I wasn't amazing I just had to not stop because I'd heard people talk about, like on podcasts, which is why I'm so excited, um, I heard people just saying like, you know, because when you start a blog, and if you look up advice, should I start a blog? Often they'll say like, there are already 200 million blogs. What they don't say is, like almost all of them, like there are three posts and then they stop blogging. So I just knew that, I needed to stick with it and that even if I wasn't amazing like all the competition which I don't really believe in competition at all with blogging um, or with anything like I'm really a fan of collaborating and especially with blogging and YouTube like you can follow so many people at once it's not like a gym where you're only at one gym or the other this is like you know they all sort of complement each other and create a whole experience together so anyway, like just by me sticking with it, all of these people who were starting around the same time, most of them, at least 90% of them, would have stopped blogging by now. So yeah, so that's just something I always had in mind, even though I struggled so much with self-doubt and with everything. Like there were months sometimes where I didn't post a single thing and it really hasn't been until the last month that I've actually been like putting in all the effort that I want to be putting in I've always sort of had my had my foot on the accelerator and my foot on the brake at the same time and now I've finally taken my foot off the brake um <laughs> which is self-sabotage and I talk about in other videos and I won't go into the whole thing today but yeah that's just something I've been thinking about as I've been reading that um, I've been reading Gary Vee's book as well, the Ask Gary Vee Show book, but 
Honestly, as much as I'm into Gary B, I'm not into the book. It's not actually a story. And actually, I haven't realized until I just said that that's the reason why I'm not into it. It's literally like a FAQ page, which I guess it, that's what I knew it would be. It's questions and answers. But I guess I've been consuming a lot of his podcasts and videos as well. So I've, I'm familiar with a lot of what he says. There's been a few really insightful things and he really talks about patience, which is one of the reasons I really um, like following him. But there's just no story and he sounds really arrogant in it. He sounds arrogant in person, but I feel like it comes across differently when he's saying it because you can tell how passionate he is and all that kind of thing. But in the book, it just sounds really arrogant without having him say it. So I'm not that into it. I think I will just read it every now and again, like pick it up in different spots and kind of instead of reading it cover to cover, just read little sections when I feel like it. But I don't think I'm going to be reading that in the mornings. I'm so, as I said the other day in the mornings at the moment, I do 30 minutes of reading a business or personal development book and then 30 minutes of working on Brooke's course, um, the a self coaching scholars program, which is basically teaching you how to manage your own mind. So good. I love it. And yeah, so I really want to make sure that book is something that's getting me thinking and feeling inspired and I'm learning a lot. Whereas when I was reading, I only read it one morning. I think it was Wednesday morning. I was just like, mm, not really feeling it. Then I read, started reading this yesterday. I mean, I read for about an hour this morning and wow, I haven't read much. Um, and I just really love the story. So I'm going to be putting Ask Gary V aside for now and continuing with Shoe Dog. I'm also excited, hopefully tonight I'll get some time to read a fiction book. I only really read fiction at night time and in my chill time. So I'm reading After You by Jojo Moyes. Moyes. That is that how you say your last name? Anyway, yeah, that's all I really have to share. Today is Friday, which means it's my day off blogging slash my business stuff, except for this because I film these every single day and also being excited about my podcast because I like, I'm just so excited that it's actually in iTunes and that I can go to iTunes. I think this is why I'm most excited. I can go into iTunes and next to all my favorite podcasts is my podcast because I subscribe to it, of course. Um, and that just is exciting. So having the day off, I'm catching up with my friend Suze. We're having lunch and then we're going to have a look at the shops um, at Indrapilly because I really want to buy some new undies <laughs> um, from Cotton On Body and just have a look around and I haven't seen her for ages so that's going to be really good and then I'm working at my part-time job tonight. So yeah that is all I'm doing today. I also need to clean my room but I have to see if I have time because I'm meeting her for brunch at 11 and it's like 10 30 now so I reckon if I put on my timer for 10 minutes and just try to do as much as I can that that's probably the best use of the next 10 minutes. <laughs> Um, anyway, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoy my podcast. Make sure you check it out and let me know in the comments what you think. I'm also doing a Q&A style podcast. I think I'm going to be, I was saying the other day, I'm not sure if I want to interview people, but I think I've been thinking about it and I think there are people that it would be helpful to have and just interesting for me to talk to them. So I think I'm going to do that too, but I do want to do Q&A style as well, so if you have a question, email me sam at smart 20s twentiescom dot com, or comment or whatever. There are a million ways to contact me. Um, yeah. Okay. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.